Hi, I'm Hank, and my team and I make videos on the YouTube channel SciShow. One of the best parts of making science videos is that you sometimes have a chance to show people how cool science looks. And that's something you can learn from this experiment, too. I'm going to use my knowledge of chemistry to turn some plain powder into rainbow snow. Let's get started. For this activity, you need red, blue, and yellow fizzing tablets, some instant amazing snow powder. You'll also need three plastic cups and three larger plastic cups. First, arrange your three small cups in a straight line. Fill them each with about two ounces of warm water. That's about a quarter of a cup. Then we're just going to add some color. My red one's going in the first cup, the yellow one in the second, and the blue in the third. Now we wait until the color's all out and they stop fizzing. Once they've calmed down, arrange your three larger cups in a straight line, adding one scoop of instant amazing snow powder into each cup. It's time for another prediction. What do you think will happen? when you add the colored water from the small cups to the snow powder. Take a second to write down your prediction. You could even draw a picture of what you think the cups will look like when you're done. Then, when you're ready, pour the water from the small cups into the larger cups. Like a lot of our other experiments, this activity worked because of a reaction. Specifically, it happened because of what's called a physical reaction. Physical reactions happen when the physical properties of something change, but the chemical properties don't. For example, I can change this paper physically by tearing it into a bunch of tiny pieces, but it's still paper, right? It's only changed physically, not chemically. Another example of a physical reaction was what happened with my snow. It absorbed water and the coloring through a process called osmosis. And that made it get bigger and fluffier and also changed colors. But on a chemical level, it's still just instant snow. Now, I said that this happened through osmosis. And that's really important because osmosis is a really cool process. This is where something like water moves through a barrier. In this activity, the water moved into the instant snow powder. But there are all kinds of examples of osmosis out there. One of the most important ones is the movement of water into plant and animal cells. These cells are the building blocks that make up living things. And they all require water to work. So in that way, Osmosis is the reason things can stay alive. Now that you have your rainbow snow, there are plenty of fun experiments you can do with it. This one is pretty easy, and as a bonus, it also tests your powers of prediction. For this activity, the only things you'll need are some rainbow snow and a clear container. I'm also going to use my funnel here. This is for motor oil. But well, it's never been used for that. First, make some snow art. Pour your rainbow snow into your container and try to come up with fun patterns or ways to layer it. Once your masterpiece is finished, take a picture of your snow art or make a drawing of it using colored pencils, crayons, or markers. Then, leave the container alone overnight. In the morning, check it again and draw a new picture or take a new photo of what you see. What's changed? Here's one I made two days ago and the one that I just made. You can definitely see some changes already happening. Leave your container alone for five to ten days, and every day, stop by to see what's different. And after the tenth day is up, compare your experiment to your first drawing or photo. What do you think happened? Think about what you learned about osmosis in the last activity. Once you're done experimenting with your rainbow snow, there's a way to dry it out and start over. Because that's the thing about physical reactions. They're usually reversible. When you're ready, spread the snow onto a plate or a shallow dish. The thinner a layer of snow is, the faster this activity is going to happen. Then, leave it there for a few days and it should turn back into a powder. That's because all of the water in the snow evaporated. Or in other words, it got warm and turned into a gas. If you've ever seen a puddle disappear on a hot day, that also happened because of evaporation. Thanks for experimenting with me.